be seated in the presence of the King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My mama, he's here. <laughs> he's here this morning. And he's here in a different presence than he was last night. He comes in many ways. <laughs> he's here to speak peace to us today. Every wall that divided us. And until the walls are flat and the divisions are demolished, there will not be real peace. There will not be real prosperity, which is just a side dish from God. There will not be true anointing until there's peace and there's no peace until we understand that we're one body one body hallelujah I have a covering called the church of God in Cleveland, Tennessee but I have a husband man whose name is Jesus and as long as I stay under his covering anything else is just extra things that he allows me to be a part of. You understand? I don't know if you'd understand that, but I understand that God is bringing us to another level in him. And we talk about the fivefold, and I missed yesterday, and I apologize I wasn't able to be. We talk about the fivefold, but there's only one hand. And if I'm just the thumbnail <laughs> on my little crooked finger, because you know if that thumbnail's missing, boy, that little finger hurts. And I get real angry at God sometimes because my little fingers are so crooked. Because I would love to play. But you see, if I played, I wouldn't be standing here. Because I love to sing. I'm a fifth generation, Holy Ghost, baptized, done talking. My, my granddaddy, my great granddaddy, his name was Badlax Bill. <laughs> Badlax Bill Curry. And my great great granddaddy, Badlax Bill Curry, went through all of this area in the early early years. I'm fifth generation going on. My, my, I have now children. We have six children generations. And my great great granddaddy went through this area, put up tent revivals. He was bad lax Bill and his 12 little Bills. He had 12 children. My great grandmother was the oldest of those and my grandmother was the oldest of her family. And she and my grandmother was a Rayleigh. So if you know if any of the Rayleighs, that, that's my heritage. And I was, but it, but in all of that family, I was always the misfit and reject. Because I was different. Did I want to be different? No. Did I want everybody to like me? Yes. I'm very smart. Are you smart? We have the mind of Christ. We're smart, y'all. And I thought I could just use my intelligence to get whatever I wanted. So my intelligence caused me to be that I could go in the Air Force or the Army or wherever I wanted to and the highest I wanted to go because of my testing in high school. Yay, I'm going in the Air Force. That's who I'm going to be. I'm going to be a, ma I'll be a major in the Air Force. But I had asthma and none of them would take me. I was a misfit and a reject. Or I thought I was. Until I found out who I really am. Uh -huh. 
Now, the someday that I wish I wasn't who I am, when I speak prophecies that people don't want to hear, because prophecies is not just, well, you're going to be blessed and you're going to have. But I, when I tell you, you don't get your life straight now, you're going to die next week. That's a hard word, brother. But if we're going to walk in the calling God's called us to, we have to walk in the calling. And one of the hardest places to be is to stand behind a pulpit every Sunday and Wednesday and whatever other night and then to set, stand by a bedside of one, someone who's dying, go to a family that their son just got killed in a car wreck and you don't know if they really knew Jesus. I can go prophesy, and that's awesome, and I love when God uses me in the prophetic. But we might never know about that prophetic word. But when we stand as pastor, as shepherd, there's something that happens in us that we are no longer our own. And I was thinking about as I was being prayed for last night. I did not realize until you all began to pray for me that those things that were spoken in me were not just things that I carry for myself. Come on. Come on. But some of those sicknesses. See, I don't have leukemia. You're talking about the blood test. Those blood tests, that was for my mom. We were there for my mom, Mary. My mother, unless she gets a miracle of healing, and she's already lived two years longer than they said she would, my mom has a myodysplasia syndrome, and her blood cells don't reproduce. And when he spoke that last night, I really realized that, that we are carriers. Hey, come on. Come on. As pastors, we are carriers. But I'm telling you, it's time we begin to birth some things. Some things we carry way too for long. Come on. And we, we have the burden of the Lord. Pastors have the burden of the Lord. And as we have the burden of the Lord, some days we can't hardly get out of bed because one thing, we haven't slept most of the night because we've been in prayer for those that we have the burden for. And people wonder why you're not up at 9 o'clock out going about because you haven't gone to bed till 3 because you've been carrying the burden of the Lord. But I found out, and I sound like I'm mad, <laughs> but I found out that the burden of the Lord is the greatest ministry Come that on. we can That's have. Jesus, he had a burden, and he carried it. Now, he knew that he had to carry it to the Father. Amen. That's why he would go and pray all night long. Because he was carrying the burden of all of us. He was already beginning to birth ministries in us. He was carrying generations and generations and generations of the burden of the Lord that would become our burdens. And if we're going to be effective, I don't care if we're apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, song leader, we don't talk a lot about musicians, but I'm telling you, musicians carry a burden. Yes, they do. They're a more prophetic than a lot of us who call us prophets. That's right. Yeah. And that's why the enemy wants to grab hold of them and, and sidetrack them and put them in the world and make them rich and famous so they end up dead on drugs. Come on. Because it's the burden of the Lord that they carry. And I, this is totally different than what I got written. My Lord. I'm going, I'm going. It's time. It's time that we be the body. I, th I, think, I'm, am I, pre I think I'm preaching tonight, right? I think I'm, well, I'm, I'm, I'm ministering tonight. 
I think that's what I'm preaching tonight. Yes, ma'am. I told a little sister, I'm going to show my eyes. God. Pastor. Pastor. Shepherd. Carrying them around broken lambs. Carrying ewes that should be grown and able to walk in maturity. But they're so wounded. But no, people just think they're hateful. Mm -hmm. Come on. And we rebuke them because we think they're hateful. Mm -hmm. And what they need is the oil of joy That's right. poured in. That's right. And bind up those wounds. That's right. Get down deep into the wounds. That's right. Do some deep surgery if we have to. That's right. So we have a healed body. The church I pastor in Port St. Joe, six years ago, it was a very vibrant church. If they called it, they thought they were a very vibrant church. Had close to 200 members. That's about what the building will hold. And there's one stronghold there. It's called the love of money. It's prevalent in almost every church. God blesses us. We forget where we came from. And now we got a pot of money. And we're not going to touch it because we, we got this money. And it's, it's to do whatever. No, we can't spend any of it because now we got this money. It's, it's our stamina, and our, our, our stigma now. We have money. We're no longer poor and pitiful. We have money. So I can't get the parsonage fixed because this money, if we spend it, we won't have it. <laughs> Evidently, I'm talking to somebody that knows what I'm talking about this morning. So the pastor that was there, Pastor Tim, he loves the Lord with all of his heart. But he was raising up a ministry there. And people were coming in. And, and then all of a sudden, for whatever reason, they decided they were going to build a new church. Out of the location where we are, way out somewhere. And they're, they're building their church in wet waters. And that's fine. That's where they want to be. But I'm telling you, when they began to say, we are going to build a new church, the people didn't want a new church because they didn't really need a new church. But the ministry was flourishing, and he said, we're going to build a new church. We're going to take the money, and we're going to build a new church. <coughs> and so he had some stand against him. And so the church split. Everybody left but two families. And this is a, a, a like me, fifth generation Pentecostal preacher. Raised in um, Assembly of God, Church of God, Church of God prophecy. You know, it's kind of... And he, they left. And they had three families who stayed. He said, we're, we're Church of God. This is the church. And there was a whole lot of wrong. A whole lot of wrong. And wounded people wound people. Hurting people hurt people. So instead of anybody binding the wounds, trying to bring healing and get the root of what caused the wound, they're just split. So now there's a church over here struggling because a lot of those people left. And here's this church of God struggling. So, two and a half years ago, some of my friends that I have tried to mentor in ministry for years, but they cannot find their place. They've been in Church of God of Prophecy. They've been in Church of God. They've been in Assembly of God. Even been in Anderson, Indiana Church of God, which doesn't believe in the gift of speaking in tongues, because they were trying to find a place where they could pastor. Now, I don't think he's even called as a pastor. He's a missionary. 
He has a heart and a passion for missions. And the work where they finally are now, they're doing outreach mission work. And their church is growing because they're doing mission work because that's what he's called to do. Amen. But they called me. And I was their prayer mentor. They were in my church years ago when I pastored in Lake Wells. And he was there. And they had I knew they were missionaries. And I tried to mentor them in their calling, but they wanted to pastor. So they pastored in all these dominations. But when they went to Port St. Joe, God divinely sent them to Port St. Joe for me. Believe God will do that. He will. Yeah. And in March, two years ago, they, I, I, she called me. We'd stay on the phone three hours crying. She was crying. I was praying. Praying, 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 praying. Praying, praying. And she said, Lewis wants you to come and preach. She said, we're not going to be here. <laughs> but we want you to come and preach. We're, we have to go to Orlando. We want you to come and preach. You can stay in the parsonage. So my husband, George, and I drove from Jacksonville to Port St. Joe. And that night, as I laid on the bed in that parsonage, God gave me an open vision. Absolute open vision. And I saw dark-skinned people laying between the church and the parsonage. They, were, they looked like they were dead. My husband's uh, part Cherokee. He's dark complected. His skin's very much like yours. And he was laying. Uh, he was in these people that looked like he was dead. My aunt Judy, Judy, who mentored me very young in prayer, as a, in prayer ministry, she was there, and she was lying over my husband George, and I went and laid over her, right to her. We were connected. And as we did, rain, looked like rain, began to come down. Mm. And as the rain fell, it turned into, it wasn't rain, it was the glory of God. And as the glory of God, came, these people began to raise up. And the Lord told me, I'm raising up your heritage. I didn't understand all about my heritage here. I'm preaching this morning in Panama City, not too far from where my grandmother pastored in the early 30s. In St. Andrews. She pastored the St. Andrews Church of God in the early 30s. And God said, I'm raising up your heritage. Two blocks from me is the Assembly of God Church who my, one of my great uncles founded. I did not know that until I moved. And I knew about my grandmother, but I never put the connection. But God sent us to poor St. Joe. Now, has it been fun? Absolutely not. Has it been glorious? Absolutely has. It doesn't matter where we are as long as we're in His will. Amen. It doesn't matter the hell we go through as long as we're in His will. If He's called you to pastor... Get where he's called you to be. Because there's souls that cannot come forth until we're in our place in the body of Christ. Those people that were so wounded that first time I went to that church and I stepped into the pulpit. The glory of God is in that pulpit in such a way that sometimes I can hardly stand behind the pulpit. And that morning, I preached. The glory of God was there. When, that night, I preached. And as I stepped down, it has two steps, and I stepped down. And when I stepped down to the second step, I had this overwhelming feeling that I had come home. And I said, God, don't tease me. God, don't tease me. Because you see, we're put in places where we're under men. We're put in places by men. And here I was. I've only been in the church of God for three years. And I'm a woman. And there's not many women pastors in the church of God. But God divinely called me there. And He divinely set up for me to be there. Yeah. July, they called me back. And two days before I was going, when the presbyters called, he said, Pastor Vicki, are you still interested in going to Highland View Church? Uh -huh. Yes, yes, sir, I really am. I'm interested. I said, as a matter of fact, I'm preaching there this Sunday. 
he said, well, uh, you can't, you, Lewis can't go anywhere. I said, and I didn't say he's going anywhere. I just said, I'm, going, I'm preaching there. He said, he cannot go anywhere because he has to tell his people he's leaving. I was so torn. I thought, what is he telling me? He's asked me if I want to be there, but he's not telling me I'm going to be there. But that Sunday morning, when I went back to that church, and I walked in that pulpit, I knew I had come home. And can I tell you that pastoring the Highland View Church of God going on July will be two years has been fun. It's been a glorious time in the Spirit. But the pastoral ministry, the pastoral ministry, wounded people, wound people. That's right. And because of their woundedness, they didn't know if they could really trust me. And what happened, they didn't even have an opportunity to vote. I was appointed by the state. I wasn't voted in. I was appointed because it was divine set up from God. The Thursday before that Sunday I went, I had an open vision. And in the open vision, I saw the bay. You've been to the, the church. The bay, when you, when you drive up there, the bay is to the right. I had no idea until this past week that that, that bay used to be totally filled with houses and stores and motels and all of these places. But in this vision I had on Thursday morning before I went to preach on Sunday, God gave me an open vision, and I saw the bay, and I saw everything that everybody needed supplied. The bay is now empty. It's deserted. Highland View is this little community. Uh, there's, there's Port St. Joe, which is the elite of the elite. There's Northside, which is the black folk. It's, there's still such a divide there. And then there's Highland View, that's the scum of the scum. Thank God he gave me the scum of the scum. Amen. Thank God he gave me those who think they're high lifted up, but God is drawing them down and letting them know that he has a plan of purpose for their life. That's right. And those who think they're nothing, God is raising up Come in the on. gifts of the Spirit. Come and on. I don't have a big crowd. And sometimes I get so frustrated because I only have maybe 20 or 23. But you see, I've got some people that love Jesus. And I, until I grow those 23 and they get healed of all their burdens and they get healed of all those deep wounds and they get healed of all those things that's been spoken about them and they get delivered from all the things they speak about other folk. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. And there's restitution and reconciliation. Yes. That's right. Then God will show up like he did when Brother Morford was there. And he shows up every Sunday. But nobody's understanding it because they're too afraid to come. They're afraid if I come, I'm going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. But God is restoring. And I think that's one of the, under, what we understand about pastoral ministry. If you're not willing to bring restoration to the body of Christ, you are not a pastor. All right. All right. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. If you're not willing to humble yourself, Jesus humbled himself every single day. Every time he went to pray, wherever he went to pray, he humbled himself under the hands of his Father God, and he said, Daddy, you see what I'm going through. Yeah, yeah. But Lord, Daddy, your will be done. Your will be done. Amen. Hallelujah. There's some scriptures in Jeremiah you can read. <laughs> There's some scriptures in Ephesians you can read. Maybe this brother's gonna <laughs> Maybe you'll read some of my scriptures, hopefully. <laughs> since, I didn't, since I didn't get there. <laughs> I do want to read this one scripture in Ephesians and then I'm gonna I'm gonna do whatever what I need to do. <laughs> <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4 the unity of the body and uh, this, I'm, I'm reading from this Bible that I have it's called the One New Man Bible Amen. and it's revealing Jewish roots and power how many of you know that God's bringing us back to the root Amen. 
And this gentleman, Brother Bill Morford, was just at our church, and he, he mentored me in my early years down in Lake, in Lake Wales at Lakeland Carpenter's Home Church, and we'd have, we'd have Tuesday morning miracle services, and that when God really began to use me, and he, he trained me and, and really imparted into me about the gifts and the ministry. But he was at our church last weekend. He was on Sid Roth, the miracles. And uh, he was in Bill Johnson, in, in Bill Johnson, one of Bill Johnson's services several months ago. But I don't know how long it's been now. And he got a gold tooth in that service. He had a miracle. And I said, Brother Bill, I'll see your tooth. And it's beautiful. He said, his dentist said he never in his entire profession ever seen gold like that. And God wants to bring the miracles. He's, he's working miracles. Did you know us sitting here together this morning is a miracle? Texas? Port St. Joe. God is bringing a core of people together that will flow mm, in the fivefold mm -hmm. mm, without any jealousy. Come on. No jealousy. Come on. Exalting one another. Come on. Not exalting me. Exalting you. Exalting you. And only exalting our anointing because of the Christ in us. So if you're exalting me, you're lifting up the name of Jesus if I'm walking in his anointing. But if I begin to see, oh, they're exalting me, I must be greater than. You will fail. That's right. And there are some ministries that are getting ready to fall. That's the truth. Some of them are already falling. It just hasn't been revealed yet. Amen. Apostle Paul said in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, Therefore I, a prisoner of the Lord. Am I reading your scripture? Or you can, yeah, I'll, I'm, just, I'm going to read it and you can preach it. Okay. okay. Therefore I... <laughs> I love this. Tag team preaching. Okay. A prisoner of the Lord urges you to walk worthily mm -hmm. in the calling Difficult. to which you've been called uh -huh. Uh -huh. with all humility. Come on, Come on. <laughs> hey, look at me. Did you hear that word again? Go home. <laughs> It's already done. <laughs> With all humility and gentleness. But you will forgive me, brother. <laughs> With patience <laughs> and bearing one another in love. Not just loving one another, but bearing one another amen, in love. Amen, amen. Being diligent to keep unity. If we didn't work on anything but that, Come on. being diligent to keep unity the of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Mm -hmm. One body. One Spirit. Mm -hmm. Just as also you were called. That's right. You're not called tomorrow. You were called from the foundation of the earth. Hallelujah. That's right. In one hope. Mm -hmm. What's your hope? Oh, I'm going to have a big church. I'm going to have 2,000 members. One hope. His name is Jesus. If I hope in Him, everything else is just added attraction. One hope. Huh. Thank you, Lord. Of your calling. One Lord. One faith. One immersion. Baptism. They immerse themselves. They often immerse themselves. They didn't get baptized at the age of 12 and, and never get immersed again. They immersed. They went to the river often and immersed themselves. Left their past. Left their sins. One God and Father of all, the one over all things, and through all things and in all things. And the grace, if you're ministering in anything other than grace, you're ministering in your flesh. 
And the grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of the gift of the Messiah. He gives the gifts. He gives the gifts. So if he's not giving you the gift that somebody has and you would like to have, you're not going to curse them and get their gift. Amen. You're going to walk, and you're either walking the gift God gave you, and if you walk in your gift as the way he wants you to walk, and he might even add another gift to you. But if you don't, he'll take that gift away from you, and you might keep using it, but you're using it under the enemy. You're speaking what the lies of the enemy speaking rather than true prophecy. And I don't take that back. And the grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of the gift of the Mashua, Messiah, Jesus Christ. For this reason it says, when he ascended into the high places, he turned the tables on your enemy in warfare. Hallelujah. Quit fighting. Quit fighting. We're trying to fight an enemy that Jesus has already turned the tables on. That's right. Oh, preach. And he went up. What is this ascending? Unless he also descended into the lower parts of the earth. The one who descended is the same one who also ascended high above all the heavens. So that all things. What? How many? All. Would be filled with his presence. Hallelujah. When you walk in the store. Does people know Jesus walks in? Right. Or do they know a complainer and a grumbler right. and a soothsayer mm. walks in? Mm. He gave, on the one hand, apostles. On another hand, prophets. Still others, evangelists. And others, pastors and teachers. For the equipping of the saints. For the work of ministry. For building up the body of the Messiah. Until we would all attain in the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God into a mature person, not babies, mature, to the measure of the full maturity of the Messiah. You mean I can be like Jesus? Yes, you can. We are His body. And we should be walking in the same maturity he did. And you know what his greatest maturity was? That he knew he always had to depend on his father. That it was not all about him. He, he only did. He said, I'm only about my father's business. Just to be. Thank you, Lord. Until we would all attain to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God into a mature person to be the measure of the full maturity of the Messiah, so that no longer would we be infants being tossed about and carried by every wind of teaching in the craftiness of men, in cunning and deceitful scheming, but that being truthful in love, we would bring to maturity all the things in him who is the head, Messiah, from whom the whole body of Messiah is being joined together and uniting through every ligament that serves for support according to working in a measure by each individual part. He is making the body grow, building itself up in love. Father, oh my daddy God, I thank you for the privilege of standing behind this pulpit. And God, I know I stand in front of some of your mature saints. But God, we all are hungry for more of you. And God, I just declare and decree and impart, God, Lord, a fresh fire. Let your fire burn in this place, Lord. Burn in our hearts, God. Let the wind blow upon that, bl that blaze, Father God, and set us ablaze with your glory, God, that people might see Jesus in us, the hope of glory in us, Lord, that it wouldn't be about us or our title or what is written, Lord, over, over our, our name, God, but it would be all about you, Jesus, that we would be the body, that we would be 
about your business. That we would be who you've called us to be. And Lord, when we decide that we're just going to be, Lord, you will show us and reveal through us who we really are. Because we're being your body. And we give you praise for it today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She did a great job. Glory to God. Great job.